We're going to do a little experiment with two climb speeds, Vx and Vy. On the left is Vx, which is the speed which gives us our best angle of climb, while on the right is Vy, which yields the best rate of climb. We're going to launch both aircraft at the same time and compare. You can see that we have the climb gradient as computed by ForeFlight for each aircraft. It should be highest for the Vx climb, while the rate, as indicated by the vertical speed indicator on the right side of the altitude tape, should be maxed for Vy. You might know that these speeds are affected by altitude. Vx will increase with altitude, while Vy will decrease. In fact, the point at which Vx and Vy converge is our absolute ceiling, where we can no longer sustain a positive rate of climb. Vx and Vy will be the same speed at that altitude, and they're already slowly converging. Let's look at why. Vx is the speed that gives us our max excess thrust, the most amount of thrust available over the thrust required, which is a product of drag. In higher, thinner air, thrust available decreases, but so does drag. This pushes our Vx speed, where we have max excess thrust, higher. We have to push more air at faster speeds to generate excess thrust. Vy isn't a function of thrust, but of power. Vy is the best rate of climb. Rate is dependent on time, and so is power. An engineer defines power as the distance you can move a given amount of weight in a given amount of time. Power is an expression of time. The power curve looks like this. Once again, Vy is found where we have max excess power. As we climb, there is a slight decrease in power required, but with a more dramatic decrease in power available, as there's less oxygen to feed the engine. Thus, while there is an increase in Vy with altitude, it's not a very big one. So we can plot the changes in Vx and Vy to show that in terms of true airspeed, they both increase with altitude, although Vy increases more slowly. V speeds are given not in true airspeed though, but in indicated airspeed. An indicated airspeed is lower than true airspeed in the thinner air. So the V speed curves bend backwards a bit when given in knots indicated airspeed. And now we see Vy actually decreasing at a point of intersection. This point is the aircraft's absolute ceiling. We're witnessing this in real time. We launched our aircraft at the same time, with Vx at sea level at 62 knots now increased to 70, and Vy at sea level of 74 knots now also down to 70. It's here where we find our top altitude of 16,000. I should mention that please don't try to climb your 172 up this high like this, especially at the slower VX speed, as you will almost certainly cook your cylinder heads putting the engine under that much stress. But this is a great experiment in how VX, VY, and absolute ceiling interrelate, and is part of the full aerodynamics training included in our online ground schools at the Flight Insight course page linked here and in the description. Check it out today.